So when you ask the question, like, who are these nomadic herders in Mongolia? They're living in these yurks and gears. Yes, they're herders, and they are men and women who are basically traveling from grazing land to grazing land with their herds. But more than that, they are a community of herders who are working together. Hi. This is Anita from the Dusty Roads podcast. You know, one of the most amazing places that I ever traveled to is Mongolia. And I think one of the reasons why I enjoyed Mongolia so much is once you get out of Ulaanbaatar, it's really like this desolate, vast country of just countryside. In fact, the freeways going through Mongolia is just basically two lanes because you could go for 20 minutes and not see another vehicle or another car. And yet this is one of the largest countries in the world as far as landmass goes, but it's the most sparsely populated. Today I want to kind of answer the specific question about who are the nomadic herders in Mongolia that are living in the yurts, or actually Mongolia, they call them gears. And then a little bit about these herders and some things that I learned about them, which I feel like are things that we could use for our own lives and understand. Yeah, the Mongolian nomadic herders are the men and women in Mongolia who usually have herds of camels, yak, goats, horses, and sheep. You know, most of the herders will raise the animals to sell for fur, and then the fur then is made into yarn, and it's used to make your cashmere, or it's used to make your uh, wool sweater, or something else like that. Some of the um, herders will earn some of their money off of the meat that they sell, And some of them will, they will rent out their, they might have a little camp and they might rent out some of their yurks or what's known as the gear to tourists. And, um, and then they may give them to like, you know, camel rides or horse rides or, or other things like that. And so that's how they can earn some extra income. What was really interesting to me that when I spent the night in a yurk or in what they call their gear, which is the, the, the tents that they have that they can pick up and they can move these tents together with their herds, is the husband and wife that I stayed with, they were both college educated. They both had university degrees, but they chose to live the nomad lifestyle as the nomadic herders. I found that that was really um, fascinating. And as I watched their life unfold, I found a lot of interesting things that I learned about community. You know, Mongolia is a landlocked country in East Asia. So it's sandwiched between Russia, China, and Kakistan. And it's the 18th largest with landmass, but the most sparsely populated sovereign state globally. So it only has about 3 million people. So this whole country only has about 3 million people. And most of them are living in the major city of Ulaanbaatar. So when you go out into the Gobi deserts and these other areas, it's very sparsely populated. You know, because of this, the place where we stayed, which was in the Gobi desert, was actually quite sparsely populated. But what I found is that the these Mongolian herders still had a community that many of these herders would sort of, they would move together because they'd move like four times a year with their yurks or their gears and with their herds and that they would sort of move together in a community and help each other out. The night before when we were, um, I, I was, you know, the, the night that we had actually arrived in to the gear and there was one of the local herders, a friend of theirs was there and, and kind of ate some dinner with us. And um, the next morning when I got up, I was sitting outside and all of a sudden I noticed there was a bunch of commotion going on. I saw there were a lot of people coming by on motorbikes and, and they would, then they'd go off on their dirt bikes and then they'd come back and they'd go off and they were all standing there talking. And I found out later that what had happened is that our herder had lost about 50 head of camel and he couldn't find the camel out in the desert because camels don't tend to go and pack so much. They, they can be a little bit individual and be sort of spread around. So he had to go and find his camel because that day after we were leaving, he had a group of tourists coming that were going to go on camel rides. So he called together his local community and asked them, can you help and come and help and help me round up these camels so that I can find my camel. And so that's what they were doing. They were going off on their dirt bikes. They're going off on horses and they were rounding off, rounding up the camel that was out there in the Gobi Desert. I've often thought about this as experience I had. And I thought about some life lessons that we can all learn 
from these nomadic herders in uh, Mongolia that are out there in their yurks or their gears out there in the desert, that there are things that we can learn from them that we can use in our own lives. And one of the first lessons is that they work together as a group. It was really evident to me as I was sitting there outside watching this all happen and unfold, that these guys work together as a group, that this wasn't something that would, it was the first time they've done it, that they have done this many, many times where they have reached out and helped each other, where one needed help, then the other one would come and et cetera. So they basically have this community where they would help each other and they knew how to work together as a group. They understood what it meant to support their neighbors. They knew that they're living in a harsh climate. In the wintertime, it gets really cold in Mongolia. Mongolia is right up there by Siberia. So it's an extremely cold country in the wintertime. In fact, it was so cold that my nomadic um, herder told me that the, the last winter was so cold, they lost 30 horses and only had three horses left so you can imagine that you know that's a huge amount of animals to lose in one winter because the winter is so cold so you know these guys also too they they understand what it means to support their neighbors so i really you know loved and appreciate that aspect of it the other lesson was that the um the mongolian herders they can teach us about building a community They can teach us about the importance of what it means is to have a community. And it doesn't really matter how big or small your community is, that you build some kind of community, that you have a community. You have a community that can support you. The other point is that they were willing to sacrifice for each other. You know, community is only as good as the people around you are willing to serve and to sacrifice and to to help you. Now, I am sure that my nomadic herder friend or the family I was staying with didn't abuse this type of support or trust because they knew how important it was. They knew that they needed to be in this community where they would help each other, where if somebody asked for them and said, we need your help, that they would come and that they would help them. They understood that collectively together, they could do so much more than if they were alone. And I honestly don't know, as I looked at this harsh countryside, as I looked at the area out there, how would a nomadic herder even survive completely on their own without any neighbors or support? It would probably be quite difficult. They realized that they needed the collective, they needed the group, they needed the support together, they needed to help each other. You know, they they really taught us that we can do anything if we have the right group of people. And they remind us all that we should live to serve others. That really that, you know, life is about service. One of my favorite quotes is, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. I really love that because, you know, they understood this joy of serving, this joy of helping, this joy of going out to support their neighbor. They also understood the importance of it. They understood that in order for them to really survive in this harsh climate, they needed their neighbors. They needed a support system. They needed a group. So when you ask the question, like, who are these nomadic herders in Mongolia? They're living in these yurks and gears. Yes, they're herders, and they are men and women who are basically traveling from grazing land to grazing land with their herds. But more than that, they are a community of herders who are working together and supporting each other and are helping each other. So if one person has camels that are lost, the other person will come and help them. If somebody's in need of something else, I'm sure that they will also come to help them. And that really is a great example to each of us that we can, each of us, build a community like this, that we don't have to be the nomadic herders, but instead that we can do things to build a community around us that will support and help us to achieve the great things that we want to achieve in life. This is Anita from the Dusty Roads podcast, and I will put a link below to our blog about who are the nomadic herders in Mongolia in the Yurks. And if you'd like to be, um, be able to read it, it's I think it's really quite a fascinating read to understand a little bit more about them. I actually have some pictures of them from my time uh, when I was traveling there. You can see some of the landscape. You can see 
um, you know, some of these men that were out there on their camels. And hopefully you can gain a little bit of inspiration and be able to build your own community. We'd like to thank our community and essentially uh, Rico, who helps put these podcasts together because we know without him and his work, it, this would not be possible. Thank you all so much for listening.